In this video, we're going to start to take a look at C data structures. And we're going to be starting with linear data structures, which are data structures that can be represented as like a list or array of values. So you have this general idea where you have a value that points to another value, which points to another value, and that continues on until you reach the end of the data structure itself. Linear data structures include things like stacks, queues, and linked lists. Those are typically the main three that we look at. Now, inside of these linear data structures, there's really a foundational structure that is used to build all of them, and it's called a node. A node is a data structure that contains a value. I'll use integer values to keep things simple. So maybe this has a value of five. And it also has a pointer, which is this right here, that points to another node. And that's how we get this idea of like chains of values like this, right? We have a node structure that points to another node structure. So each node points to another one and we continue following that chain until we reach the end of that structure. That's generally the idea of these linear data structures and the idea of nodes. Now you'll see online that a lot of people may implement these types of data structures using just an array or a list. And you could do that, but it abstracts away a lot of the detail of how this is really working. And in C, working with arrays is a bit more uh, painful, I would say, than working with a node, which is why I prefer to show the node-based approach because it's a bit more foundational uh, and it gives you a lot more of that insight into how these structures really work. So understanding that, let's take a look at the actual code and see how we could build a node data structure. So we'll go over to our code here. And I have two files that I'm gonna work in for right now. I have node.c and node.h. Now we saw header files previously, and we saw that they could be used to link multiple files together. A header file can also be used to store various pieces of information. We saw that we could put function declarations inside of them. Another thing that we could do is we could define structs inside of a header. And the main benefit of this is that if I store this struct in a header, any place where I want to use the struct, I can just reference the header and I get the struct available to me. Now we're using structs to represent all of our data structures because C doesn't really have any objects, but structs are close enough to objects that we could really represent everything using a struct for C. So let's create our node struct. It's a very simple structure. And generally it's just going to have two different properties in it. It's gonna have a value, which again, I'm setting as an integer. You can actually use any data type that you would like here, right? You could use a float, you could use a care, you could use a string, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for the sense of keeping things simple, I'll just keep this as an integer, but just keep in mind that this value could be pretty well anything. And then as I said, it needs to be able to point to another node to be able to create that linear linking type of system. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a struct node and we're gonna to point to the next value. The reason why we're making a pointer is because we need to be able to load both the value and the next for the node that we're pointing to. So we point to the address of that information, which allows us to be able to dereference it and get that information later if we want to. And that's really all there is to our node. It's a very simple structure. But just to make sure that you understand how this works, let's take a look at an example of how this is used. So I've included node.h, which gives me the node struct. And I could declare a node using the same sort of keywords as we would normally use. So I have struct node test, and then I could give it a value. So I could say like test.value equals zero, right? That gives us a value inside of that node. Now, if I wanna test out pointing to a different node, what I could do is I could create another node. I could say struct node test two. And then what I could do is I could say test2.value equals one. We'll just give it some sort of value. And then what I want to do is I want to make test point to test two. Now remember this next value right here is a pointer, which means that I have to give it the address of test two. So we put the ampersand and then test two like this. And now let me demonstrate that we can get these different values and we could see these values. So first off, let's see what the value of test dot value is. Okay, that's what our first print is going to do. Our second print is going to do this. It's going to say, we're gonna get the value. So we'll get the integer value of test. Now we wanna get the next value of test dot next. And now next is a pointer. So we can't do dot value, that won't work. What we have to do instead is we have to put this arrow 
and then value. What that's going to do is C is going to dereference the thing that comes before it. So it's going to take this next pointer, it's going to dereference it, and then it's going to get the value property out of the resulting struct. That's what this arrow keyword is really doing. So just keep in mind, if you're trying to reference the property of a pointer, you need to use this arrow syntax instead of the dot syntax. You're going to get a lot of practice with this. So you'll see it a lot as we're going through these different uh, videos. Now, the one other thing that we'll do here is we'll say, okay, that shows me the value of the next pointer. But then I want to prove to myself that it actually is the same as uh, test two's value. So if I print out test two dot value, I should get the same thing, right? So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'll give this a compile. We have to give it node.h and node.c since both of those files are a part of this. And we output node. When I run node, you see I get zero. Zero was the value of test. Test.next value, we were expecting to be one, which we do get. And then test2.value, which is the same as this, is also equal to one. So you see that this does actually set up that chain that we were talking about in the, uh, the, the previous diagram, right? We have this block that points to another block and we can retrieve the value out of either of those two blocks just by referencing the next keyword. And that's what we're gonna use as a trick for all of our different data structures, including things like stacks, queues, and linked lists. So thanks so much for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how to create a stack data structure.